Morning folks. Oh, that one really tough though. Hmm. I had to tap that one down a little further than I should have. So I'm working on creating my own Discord server this morning. Um, it's interesting. I'm not sure that it's something I'm going to actually use or, you know, put out there for people to find, but <clears throat> the exercise is entertaining. Yes, I suppose I really am that pale. Not sure why that color change happens when I lift a black mug, but whatever. Ugh. Uh, um, having a hard time getting started this morning. Um, not really sure what I want to talk about. It's a nice day. It's like seven in the morning. Yeah, quarter after seven. And uh, smoke my eye again. Um, you know, I'm kind of in one of those in between moods. I'm not in a great mood and not in a bad mood. Just kind of, I suppose, comfortably neutral. And It's one of those days where taking it easy sounds like a plan. But of course, uh, the consequences of my own actions <laughs> have, uh, have made that less and less likely every day. Um, but such is life, and, you know... What other choice do we have but to keep going forward? Well, I suppose we always always have the choice of stopping, but that tends to come with um, less appetizing, less appealing uh, occurrences. Really ought to move my ashtray. But in or on days like this where slow starting, not really feeling energized, it's important to remember that there's value in those days as well because those days will show you that you can slow down. You don't have to do everything all at once. And sometimes it's okay to take the weight of the world off your shoulders. Metaphorically speaking, of course. Um, <sighs> still sleepy. In fact, normally I'd still be in bed. Um, usually I lay around and check Discord and things like that before I get up and come out to make these videos. But... Today I did feel... Hmm... Not motivated exactly, but mm, just dissatisfied with the the state of existence. If I stay in bed, um, 
any longer than I did. Unless I have some IRL uh, commitments I have to meet. And Yeah, trying to rack my brain for something to actually talk about rather than just rambling at the camera. Um, but it's been a while since all I did was ramble at the camera, so I don't really feel too bad about it. <laughs> Though I really dislike the idea that I'm just making content for content's sake at this point. Makes me feel like Disney. Now, since I mentioned Disney, now I want to talk. I mentioned on last night's, last night's live stream that I think Disney has agglomerated all the black cultures. Uh, sorry, I should rephrase that for precision. I think they've agglomerated black, African, and Negroid cultures all together. Um, they've basically made it into a monolith, which it isn't any more than white culture is. Um, in fact, they're falling into the trap with darker-skinned people that uh, they've tried to shove the lighter-skinned peoples into. Um, with the Woman King and now this new Black Panther trailer, the trailers for both movies, um, in The Woman King they used anachronist or anachronistic music. Uh, they used R&B for the soundtrack over a piece that was set in essentially colonial era Africa. Um, R&B, really. Okay. Um, because American black music is, you know, just as acceptable as African traditional in a historical context. Not as egregious as what they did in the Black Panther trailer. They used a reggae remix. Um, no. 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 No, no. No. Mm -mm, no. Bad. The soundtrack from the first Black Panther movie, it made sense to have rap. Uh, because it was a modern movie. And, um, even there, because the movie was globe-spanning. It made sense as well. And it had, um, I guess, African techno would be a good way to describe it. They used a lot of African sounds, African instruments, uh, for the Black Panther movie, the first one. This one they seem to have completely given up on the idea of being original with the music and taken a Uh, reggae tune, No Woman, No Cry by Bob Marley, and use that to represent an African country. Um, guys, seriously? That's like taking mm, polka to represent South Africa. Sure, they're both white, but one is appropriate, one is not. Or, more accurately, it's not appropriate to the setting. With The Woman King, it's even worse. Um, why you would use modern R&B... Okay, let me give you a, a part of a reason why I find this so egregious. One of my favorite movies is Lady Hawk. And it's quite possibly my favorite movie very difficult to pick a favorite movie or a favorite song, for example. Um, 
but generally I go with whatever I'm feeling at the moment. So day to day, if you ask me what my favorite movie is, I might say Star Wars, I might say Lady Hawk, I might even say Godzilla. The first, well, okay, not the first one, but the first one that was made in the West. Um, Matthew Broderick was in that one, I think. I think so. Um, okay, obviously not Godzilla, but that was a trash fire in a landfill. <coughs> On a barge. Anyway, my point is that where Lady Hawk used 80s synth music over a what is essentially a European medieval fantasy setting. Uh, it's just as inappropriate as R&B. Actually, it's probably less inappropriate than using R&B for a historical piece. Um, well, nominally historical. Uh, we won't get into how the Dahomey were slavers and things like that. But it's a little less egregious to use reggae for Black Panther, sure. But it's lazy. And that's something I've noticed with a lot of the intersectional stuff. It's just lazy. The writing is low quality because they're lazy about it. The characters are underdeveloped. Ray from Star Wars, badly developed character. Finn, just a... There were so many ways they could have gone with the characters in Star in the new Star Wars trilogy that would have been, if not innovative, at least fresh. But no, let's just follow the same state, boring pattern of lazy intersectionalism. And I think that tends to be one of my biggest beefs with Hollywood right now, is that a lot of the writing is low effort. Uh, in fact, if I recall correctly, at least one or two movies in the last while, or properties, screen uh, pieces, whether it's film, TV, series, whatever, at least one or two of them have been first draft uh, productions. It's terrible. A first draft? No, no, no. You never put a first draft into production. I do a bit of writing. I would never, ever ever put out a first draft? Are you insane? And then you have things like um, Angela Bassett, uh, the Queen of Wakanda, screeching about how her whole family is gone. Um, your daughter's right there. It's not your kid. <laughs> Um, and, yeah, um, I don't know how Wakandan succession is supposed to work, but I think Shuri should be kind of pissed off. Also, I want to see the fight scene that Angela Bassett had to, to take the crown. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, apparently Namor is in it? What? Why? And why now, of all times? It's just, they're falling into the Spider-Man 3 trap. And much as I loved the same, same, the Sam Raimi trilogy, one of the biggest mistakes they made was smashing characters into that movie that just didn't need to be there. I mean, they had the new Goblin, Sandman, and Venom. It's clear that whoever's writing these things don't does not understand, clearly cannot understand the, the history involved with some of these characters. Venom and Spider-Man is the sort of relationship in the comics. Their relationship is akin to, 
it's not too different from Lex Luthor and Superman. And in especially in terms of the amount of uh, emotional investment in it. And it didn't even get its own movie. Venom was a side character in the movie that he should have been the antagonist lead of. And the Sandman story didn't need to be there. Um, it's nice to give Peter a bit of closure, but not really necessary. The redemption arc for King Marco was kind of nice. Um, the whole new goblin thing, no. Uh, Tony D actually mentioned yesterday that he would have preferred to have seen Harry turned into the hobgoblin. Uh, yeah, I remember seeing the trailer and seeing Harry as uh, the goblin. And thinking, yeah, that's going to be the Hobgoblin. Even though that still breaks continuity from the comics. I've got some sort of mess on my lens. Oh, maybe it's just the angle of the sun. Uh, but the people who are doing these adaptations don't seem to understand the characters they're adapting. And that's not surprising. If you're an intersectional feminist, how are you going to understand how a male protagonist feels. Just a second, I gotta see if I can clean that lens up. Yeah, that's definitely the uh, the angle of the sun. <laughs> uh, well, I'm getting an interesting effect for the end of my video, at least. But again, as I said, one of my biggest issues with the uh, with the new comic book movies, superhero movies, is uh, they're not really making superheroes anymore. What they're making is some sort of weird feminist... <clears throat> mishmash of... ideas and... Uh, just social traits which you don't build a story or a character that way. There's no history to some of these characters. Um, in the case of the new Star Wars trilogy especially, there was no overarching vision of what was supposed to be done. Um, <laughs> just getting a kick out of this <clears throat> out of this whole effect thing. It's like J.J. Abrams is shooting my video this morning. So much lens fire. <laughs> um, okay, so note to self, don't do this again. Uh, but with Marvel and the Woman King, with Hollywood in general, appears to be uh, creating a monolithic, or seems to have acquired a monolithic idea of what black culture is. And just as with white people, there is no overarching black culture. You have, as with Russian, French, Newfoundlander, American, right? All these different groups, different cultural uh, traditions, they fall under the umbrella of white, but white is a catch-all. It's just a simplification. It's not a description. And it's the same thing... Oh, excuse me. It's the same thing with the black cultures. You have American blacks, you have uh, actual Africans, and even within Africa, someone from Swaziland is not going to have had the same experience as someone from Liberia, or someone from Djibouti, or any number of places. Yes, I realized I just said booty. Shut up and move on. <laughs> uh, but my point is that what we're seeing is the truest form of racism. It's ignorance of difference. And the idea of being colorblind wasn't about not seeing the difference in peoples. It was about not prejudicing people based on that. 
it was the idea that everyone should be given an equal opportunity to succeed. Not, not an equal outcome, not necessarily even an equal beginning, <clears throat> but just be treated fairly and given the same shot as anyone else. And what Marvel has done is basically tell black people, we don't really care. You're black, and that's all you are. And if you don't fit our mold of black, then you're ignored. Seems hardly fair. But then again, welcome to the white treatment. <laughs> And don't get me started on ginger erasure. <laughs> anyway, folks, I hope you're having a good day. <clears throat> the pop culture pushback continues. And, uh... I have to put my hand down the other way so that my smoke doesn't end up all over the camera again. God damn. Anyway, um, hope you're doing well. Hope you have a good day. I'm gonna try my best to have one of my own. Um, goodbye, Halo. <laughs> <clears throat> but, um, you know, keep your eyes open. Realize that all you are to these people is a money printing machine. They don't really care about making good stories. They care about trying to dry you in with flashing lights and shiny objects. But there's no substance. It's, what's the uh, the term? Fairy cakes? Might be right. But I think that means something different in Britain. Uh, fairy gold. There you go. Uh, it's shiny, and it feels like the real thing. But in the cold light of day, it vanishes. Loses all of its luster. In any case, um... You know, it's it's just part of the pop culture pushback. We have to pay attention to this stuff, and we have to call it out. Other than that, rise and rise again until lambs become lions. Bye-bye.